Anyway, uh, we move along here because our first guest is the newest Jefferson County Commissioner, Pasha Majdi. Pasha, good morning to you. Good morning. Well, it's great to have you here. And I have to ask, did you think that this day would come when your name would actually be the one remaining on the list? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and good night. <laughs> nope. I, I don't blame him. I, I've never been my answer, too. Nope. Uh, what do you think about the whole process and, and this whole uh, system that's in place in Jefferson County right now? It was a little bizarre, wasn't it? And, yeah, to say and, the least. Uh, I think it's still ongoing in some respects. But you know, in my role as commissioner, which is you know freshly minted, uh, I, I'm not thinking about that at all. I just have to think about what's best for the county, our citizens moving forward, staying professional, and leaving that to the parties involved. What do you regard as the biggest challenge now, Pasha, moving forward in Jefferson County? Well, I look at it as long-term and short-term. In the long-term, it's certainly development, economic development, growth, and how we maintain our rural character, our beautiful, green uh, appearance, our natural beauty, you know, all wild and wonderful here in Jefferson County. But... I think in the short term, we've got some pretty big problems in Jefferson County, uh, particularly with the the county government itself. We've had a lot of staff turnover, um, record-breaking, I'm sure, staff turnover over the past uh, few months and years. Um, I I would say it's not a stable environment. I worry that uh, it's not a respectful workplace. I want to make sure that that is remedied right away. We need to right the course, right the ship and uh, bring stability back to the county government, Uh, and we have to do it fast. I mean, we've got a budget coming up. We don't have an executive. We don't have a deputy. We don't have a finance director. Uh, It's not a pretty picture, and we've got to to turn that around right away. Pasha, in your diagnosis, what have you determined is the reason for the personnel exits? Uh, That's a tricky one. Um, I would say... Let's start with hiring a new executive. I think what we have to do is first get somebody in there on a temporary basis so we can pass a budget that's timely without raising taxes, um, and then we can search for a long-term replacement. Um, I, I do think that uh, – well, I'll just go ahead and say it. I think the, the, the character attacks and the sniping are inappropriate, and we need to get rid of that, and we need to stop it right away. Bill? Yeah, uh, good morning, Pasha. Uh I, well, let me come back to the county just a second. But first, I understand you're a lawyer. Uh, what do you specialize in as a lawyer, as an attorney? I went to law school. Um, I am not a barred attorney, so I just want to clarify that. Oh, you're not? Okay. It did, yeah, it, it did help me understand how laws are written. Um, so a, a lot of people call what I do policy work, which is to say you know, the, the art of understanding what are the best uh, laws, ordinances, rules, procedures you can uh, pass as a government or establish as a government, whether it's at the local level or the federal level, uh, to create the outcome that you want. And you work where, Work with who, Pasha? My employer is Conservation International. It's a nonprofit. Okay, good, good. Yeah, going back to uh, uh, the turnover in Jefferson County, uh, Has this been going on for quite a while, or can it be directly linked to the fact that a couple of the commissioners decided not to show up for work? Oh, no, it predates that. Predated that, okay, yeah. Yes. And uh, Jefferson County is uh, is kind of a unique county in a lot of regards, at least from uh, on Berkeley County side looking over to it. Uh, you profess uh, economic development, uh, but your definition of what you want, what types of businesses come in, are very, very, very limited. As a consequence, compared to say to Berkeley County, uh, the development has been been slow uh do you see that turning around at all do you see the opening up the type of businesses that you would find acceptable in jefferson county well let me say start by saying this i'm I'm pretty new to the job i have a lot of learning to do uh, and I, I will come in with humility i will study and i will do my best but i do think uh, commercial development specifically commercial development is clearly an aim for jefferson county we should have economic growth the question is how do you do it how do you do it you can't, it, you know, a lot of politics these days is, is conflict-driven. You have one side that says we're for it, and the other side 
that says we're against it. And that's not really how I think of things. The way I think about it is how do you do it well? How do you do it with quality? How do you deliver high-quality services from the government? And I think what we want to do in Jefferson County is we want to have commercial growth while maintaining the beauty of Jefferson County. It's a green, beautiful, wild, and wonderful space. I love that about Jefferson County. It's why I wanted to move here five years ago. And I just think that's terrific. We have to keep that that character, if you will, of the county. Uh, good morning. This is John Gilstrap. Uh, I'm curious. I'm a Berkeley County guy, and, and the whole Jefferson County uh, conundrum has, has sort of dominated part of the news here since September. I'm curious, what is your take on the underpinnings of the the resistance to appoint the the next commissioner? What in, what's your estimation of what was actually going on there? You know, I to be honest, with you, I have a lot of thoughts on that. But if you had asked me that three days ago, I probably could have opined. Uh, at this point, since I've been sworn in, it's my duty to just focus on what's best for people of Jefferson County and deliver to the best of my ability uh, and be completely professional about it. So my approach is, that's old news. I'm not, I'm not even thinking about it. Boss, you're the politician. Look yeah. at that, man. <laughs> Slid right into that, huh? <laughs> right into this. A very smooth transition. Well, Pasha, let me ask you this. Who, who has reached out to you from the commission to welcome you to the commission? A, a few of them have. A few of them have. I'm, I'm very happy about that. Can you, and, uh, can you tell us who? I on Thursday. Can you tell us the names of those who welcomed you? <laughs> sure. Uh, my dear friend, uh, Trisha Jackson, and my, my good friend, Steve Sullivan. And I, 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 I look forward to saying hello to everybody on Thursday. Very good. I was curious as to who welcomed you. I'm, I'm glad to hear that those are the names that have welcomed you. Well done. All right. So, uh, oh, go ahead, John. You had another follow-up. Oh, no, I, ju I just wanted to go back to the issue of economic development here. Uh, famously, Rockwell, I think, the, the signs still exist, though, these many years after uh, Rockwell has established itself, you know, stop toxic Rockwell. And if I were, uh, if I were going to open a factory or if I were in, in that kind of business, I would think that Jefferson County is not the friendliest place for me to go, especially when Berkeley County is just, uh, just over there. Um, is the Rockwell, uh, resistance is the wrong word, but you know what I mean? The, the approach of, how about, how about of, animus? Animus. Animus is good. Um, is, is that kind of the standard, or is that a one-off, or is it is Rockwell not specifically okay? Because I don't I don't want to slam a particular company, but that that kind of of manufacturing. Do you see that being welcome moving into the future, or is is when you talk about the right kinds of industry for Jefferson County, is it not that? I think our citizens are very interested in having clean air, clean water, and outdoor recreation that's beautiful. And if there's any business that wants to open up here, uh, they have to pass the test. Now, Rock will pass the test, as I understand it. This is I mean, this is predating my term by several years now. But my understanding is all the engineers and the air quality experts said it passed the test. But leading up to, that, up to those decisions, our citizens were vehemently expressing their views that we want clean air and clean water here. And I agree with that. Um, once you pass the test, it's time to move on. Let me pick up on that. The solar panels or solar panel industry uh, also passes that test, but there's quite a bit of pushback in Jefferson County, and some would say that was one of the reasons that was uh, the, uh, the appointment of the new uh, commissioner was held up because of the solar farms. It could be. You'd have to ask those who were involved with the holdup. Uh, I, I can't speak for them. Um, but I can tell you, um, I have a lot to learn on this subject. I, I understand you know, my dear friend, Trisha Jackson, uh, was uh, the commissioner who was on the committees who were negotiating the new provision when it was passed into law, the new ordinance. It's not new anymore. It's about a year old, I think. Um, so I'm going to study up. I'm going to learn from her. I'm going to learn from the staff, understand how it was negotiated, why it was negotiated the way it was, how it came to pass last year and, and what the current legal status is. Pasha, when is the next Jefferson County Commission meeting? Thursday morning. Thursday morning. Do you have any indication as to whether or not you'll have a complete complement of five commissioners at the meeting? I have no indication, but I'll be there. 
And that's the important one. Now you have a, a form, so you can form. Uh, Quorum, I'm sorry, your quorum. So uh, then the action can now be taken. Regardless of what the other two do, they can start doing some of the needed activities. Pasha, you mentioned that you'll need to educate yourself and such, and, and without being able to conduct business for a couple of months, I'm not sure what the backlog is for the meetings that you'll have to be catching up on uh, with things, but at this time, does the county face any legal action uh, other than the the action that was brought forth that compelled the commissioners to attend the meeting, and we know about the the legal action in regards to removing the two commissioners, but is there any other legal action as a result of business not conducted? Uh, that I don't know. I'd have to uh, I'd have to confirm with our attorney, and we'll find out probably in closed session on Thursday. Well, I should say I will find out in closed session on Thursday. That will be my first meeting. You ran for the House of Delegates. You are now a Jefferson County Commissioner. Tell me a, a difference in approach to governing, governing between the two different types of seats, uh, if you feel there is one. Oh, it's vastly different. I, I think the, the state government's a little bit more partisan. I think local issues are less partisan. It's more of a nonpartisan, what's best for your neighborhood. I should say what's best for our multiple neighborhoods countywide. And it, it, you really just have to get out and talk to people. I, I will talk to everybody. I will meet anybody. Anybody wants to come over for a cup of coffee, you're welcome to come over to my house. Let's have a conversation. Let's meet at Black Dog over at Betty's, uh, Battlegrounds Coffee, anywhere you want to meet for coffee. Joe, uh, there's plenty of good spots around, around the county. But, look, I'll meet with anybody, and I think that's really key. If you want to run the county well, you have to listen to everybody. I plan to do that. And tell me what you think are the main issues on the minds of your constituents in Jefferson County right now? I absolutely think it's about economic growth. It's balancing economic growth, linking it with our high standards for quality of life, which starts with clean air, clean water, outdoor recreation, parks, green space, et cetera, uh, good utilities, all these things. We want economic growth, but we don't want to sacrifice our quality of life. I Oh, let's not forget traffic. Now, that's a far-off issue for us, but it will be an issue in 10, 20 years. I know about this personally because I grew up in Northern Virginia, and I was on a town council in Northern Virginia. And uh, we had economic growth that was uh, – it, it, it was not balanced well. And as a result, slowly but surely, the quality of life went downhill. And it's – you know, <laughs> when I moved out to Jefferson County, when I moved to Harper's Ferry, uh, our quality of life as a family skyrocketed. It is just way better out here. It's not even close. It's so much nicer out here. And we have to avoid making those mistakes uh, that were made um, in Northern Virginia slowly but surely over 10, 20, 30 years. That I know very well because I lived it, I witnessed it personally, and I saw that my kids didn't have the same quality of life that I had when I was growing up. And, and that's kind of sad. We don't want to see that here in Jefferson County. Both John and I once lived in Northern Virginia. John more recently than I. I lived in Northern Virginia from 86 to 88. And uh, if you haven't lived in Northern Virginia, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lived there from 64 to 21. <laughs> Pasha, Pasha, in response to the early part of Rob's question, use a phrase that I'll find out more on Thursday behind closed-door session, i.e. executive session. Uh I'm a, and I was on the county commission for six years. I was, I'm a firm believer executive sessions should never be invoked except for those rare, rare situations. Do you anticipate that this coming Thursday and as an extension, most every Thursday there will be an executive session? I, I don't know, but the question was about legal status. Status is the county being sued, and that is one of those narrow exceptions where yeah. you do want to have any executive. What, what is our legal status? What are our legal threats, et cetera? You talk about those behind closed doors. That's listed under the statute for why you can have executive sessions. And in response to that limited question, I, I did invoke that idea. Fair enough, fair enough. But I, uh, I, I but there are commissioners uh, in pra- practically every county that will choose executive session anytime they can just so they do not have the embarrassing spotlight on them and i'm hoping you're not one of them because that's something that should be invoked on one of rare occasions yeah i've personally experienced that on a council where i was trying to get something through and um there was political pressure uh to get it through and the the members on the council didn't want it to happen um so they called for an executive session um uh, speaking really frankly now under the 
guise of legal advice, but it was it was it was BS. And then we went into the back room. And they sorted out how they're going to vote, and they came back out. Um, and that really burned me. Um, I, I'm never going to do that. I think that's wrong. I think it's morally wrong. And the word, the, the fashionable word these days is transparency, right? It goes against transparency. We, we don't want to have that. I don't support uh, that approach. I think being more transparent uh, is the way to be. Uh, what part of Northern Virginia were you in? It's a big area. It, the town of Vienna. Oh, I know it well. The Vienna Inn. At my, my Vienna Inn. My son graduated from Madison High School. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, I grew up there. So when you talk about, I, I think it was unbalanced or misbalanced um, uh, development in Northern Virginia. You know, Governor Youngkin is very proud of of all of the industry and such that he's, he's bringing to Northern Virginia. It, it is the economic driver, one of the primary economic drivers for uh, for the state of Virginia. And we hear that the Eastern Panhandle is the economic driver for West Virginia, and that's always stated as as a good thing. Uh, where was the unbalance that you saw? What what happened there that you absolutely don't want to see happen here? Well, the trick about it is, are you going to measure costs to the public cumulatively or discreetly, right? So with, with each project, if you add, you know, another – this is going to be hard to relate to in Jefferson County because we don't have traffic problems like there are in, in Northern Virginia, right? But just bear with me for a second. If you add another 200 cars to the road, every single project, you can say, well, it's just 200. What's the big deal? Ten years later, you've got a mild traffic problem. Twenty years later, you've got a bad traffic problem. And then 30 years later, it's unbearable. And that's exactly what happened. When I was growing up, you could play in your front yard. No big deal. My kids were not allowed to play in the front yard. It was too dangerous. And that, that, that might sound strange, but it's a reality in Northern Virginia, especially in Vienna, Virginia. You can't have your kids playing in the front yard because there's too many cars whizzing by at too high speed because the traffic is overwhelming and that's that's sad it's a great point people cut through neighborhoods because they want to avoid the main roads but because they need to get somewhere they cut through them too quickly and that is dangerous to children in west virginia right. because of the way the highway department is structured whereas there are no county roads it's all either state or local municipality posh it becomes much more difficult especially in the eastern panhandle to get attention on road expansion. As a county commissioner, what do you propose to do to try to remedy that situation? Well, I've got to work with Delegate Clark. Now, I'm representing uh, Charlestown. Our delegate is Delegate Clark. He's a high-ranking delegate in the House, and he's working on a major traffic solution. We're trying to make that a priority uh, for Charlestown, and uh, that would be the top priority. It, like you said, it's not going to go through the commission. Uh, and I also want to clarify that I was using traffic as an example. There's a many public goods out there, right? The, the right to travel freely, uh, green space, uh, beautiful uh, scenery. Uh, we want to keep all those things. We want to keep our rural agrarian character, and you can't just whittle away uh, piece by piece and not account for that. You have to do some long-term planning while also acknowledging you know, people have their property rights. You're not going to be able to squash that just to, uh, to fit your political agenda. Bill, uh, yeah, Pasha, go back to something you said earlier about the uh, uh, the administrative support in the county. You mentioned the executor, the uh, the administrator is not there, the deputy administrator is not there. Yet you're coming up on probably the most important part of the the commission cycle, yearly cycle, and that's the preparation of the budget. Uh, how are you going to do that without these key people? And the secondary uh, second question is, do you have on the street at this time? advertising to fill these critical positions i think they're out there but i think my approach would be we have to put someone in there temporarily uh, just to get through this cycle uh, i think waiting or perhaps another way to do it uh, rushing a long-term hire would be a mistake um, i would i'd be more in favor of a temporary hire whether that's uh, uh, a, re a retired former executive who who knows the ropes or uh, perhaps bring in a consulting firm who can help us out in this uh, situation. We need to get through it quickly. That would be my approach. We need to bring in a temporary hire and then focus on a long-term hire later. Follow-up, Bill? No, uh, very good. Thanks much, Pasha. And best of luck and congratulations. Thank you. Pasha, any final thoughts on this task you're undertaking now? Well, I just want to say thank you to the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee. It has been an incredible honor to be 
named along with Keith Lowry and Isabel Simon as potential um, candidates for this open spot. Uh, it was a great honor. It is a great honor. Uh, I think Keith and Isabel would have been terrific in the position. I'm honored to have been selected. I'll do my best, and thank you to the commission for selecting me. And, and Pasha, final question for me is in regards to the selection process, do you feel as though you were a compromised candidate on the list of three who were acceptable? Or were you given any indication ahead of time whether you were acceptable to Commissioners Krause and Jackson? I, I didn't get an indication ahead of time, but hey, I was the only one that didn't strike. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> that says something. Pasha, thank you very much. I wish you the best of luck in your new endeavor, sir.